everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this gorgeous tidal moon square. This is a beautiful square to crochet. It has some really fun texture and kind of radiates out. And then we're gonna put like a nice frame around the edge of the same colors. I sort of was inspired by the palette looked kind of coastal to me and the circular center kind of radiated out like a moon. So we're gonna go through each round of this together, stitch by stitch. Now I made mine 12 inches by 12 inches and you can really customize this by making your uh, outer rounds, this that kind of frames it in uh, less or more so it will make it smaller or larger. You could really just keep going with this and I'll talk about that later in the video, but make a huge blanket if you wanted to. You could make this up in some cotton yarn and make a really pretty dishcloth as well. Now, just as a side note, this is my autumn moon square. As you can see, it has a similar center. And I actually had um, someone request if I could make this a little bit bigger with a more solid um, border around the circular part of the square. So I uh, like to experiment and I love your requests, so definitely keep them coming. But um, this is more of a kind of a fall themed square and it has uh, the granny rounds. And then this one was more of like a coastal themed square. It has more of a solid frame around this pretty textured center. So two different looks and I'll put the link down below for this pattern as well if you wanted to check that one out too. So let's get started. For this project you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to get that 12 inches by 12 inches that we're after. We're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook for this project. I'm using my Blue Furls Odyssey. I'll put the link down below if you'd like to get one for yourself. And then let's talk about this yarn. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm doing kind of more of a soothing, kind of wintry palette, sort of frozen looking. Um, and we're gonna be using uh, Red Heart with Love. And as you can see, this is a great scrap yarn project. Whenever I make squares that have lots of colors, this is a great opportunity to kind of pick and choose some like I don't really have a lot of yarn here, so it's a great way to use up some of your yarn scraps. But if you want to uh, replicate the weight and the yarn that I'm using, I'm using Red Heart with Love, and this is a medium four on the yarn weight scale. And um, we're gonna be using five colors. Now you can use as many colors as you want. I would recommend for the square using at least two colors you can really use as many colors as you want, but at least two will really show the contrast of the stitches and show off you know, all the beautiful crochet work that you're gonna do. And the colors I have here, if you wanted to replicate that, are this is eggshell. It's like a cream color off-white. This is called tan, pewter, mallard, and iced aqua here at the end. So we're gonna go, uh, when we crochet our square, we are gonna go in this order as well, starting with the um, eggshell, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so I grabbed my darker background so you can see, instead of working uh, cream color yarn on a white surface, it would be harder to see. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna create a ring to work our stitches into. So to begin that, we need to put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Now we're going to chain four. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in the chain farthest from our hook with a slip stitch and that will create our ring. So go all the way to that first chain that you made, insert your hook, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And now we have the ring that we'll be working our stitches into. So if you wanna kinda of open that up to help, and then also we're gonna hold this tail along the edge as we work, so we'll weave it in as we go along, okay? So let's begin with round one. We're gonna stick with this eggshell, we're starting with the eggshell, and we're going to, for round one, chain three. So one, two, three, and then what we're gonna do, this chain three as a side note counts as a double crochet. So then what we're gonna do is work seven double crochets into the center of the ring. I didn't mention this before, but sometimes people ask um, if you can use a magic ring instead of the uh, chains to form your ring and that's completely fine. Do whatever you like best. So we're gonna work seven double crochets into the center of the ring. To make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, 
wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so that's one double crochet, but we need seven. So that's one, and then we're gonna go two, three, four, still holding that tail along the edge, five, six, still holding that tail, and seven. And now we're gonna close up our ring by working a slip stitch into that third chain up. And what I mean by that, remember that chain three we did at the beginning of the round? We're gonna go three chains up to that topmost chain and close the round. So we're gonna go one, two, and three, and then just insert your hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And round one is complete. Now what we're gonna do is move on to round two. So what we need to do for that is we're gonna stick with the eggshell, just because this is so tiny, I'm gonna just add a little bit more so you can see it when the piece is complete. And the reason I started with the eggshell is I wanted it to sort of look like a glowy moon in the center of the square. Okay, so for round two, what we need to do, and we can just kind of tug this tail to kind of close up the center too, and just kind of get that tail out of the way. We'll trim it later. So for round two, what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna work a double crochet into the first stitch. So that first stitch that you see there. And then we're gonna work two double crochets into the next stitch. Okay, so that next stitch, one double crochet, and two double crochet. And then do the same thing in every stitch all the way around. So the next stitch, one double crochet, two double crochet, just like that, okay? And we're just gonna do this all the way around our circle. And because we're working two stitches in each one of these eight stitches, now I say eight because that, remember that chain counted as one of our, that chain three counted as one of our double crochets? We're gonna have 16 stitches around. So you might wanna double count, or double check yourself by counting, okay? All right. Continuing around, just like that, working two double crochets in each stitch. Okay, and here we are at the last one. Now before I join it, I do wanna count and make sure that I have my 16. So this, remember I said this counted as a double crochet? We're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so we're right on the target that we need. And we're gonna count three chains up once again. One, two, three, join with a slip stitch to close. Insert it into that third chain up, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we have our circle. Now, if your circle is forming a little bit of a cup shape at this point, that's totally fine. Um, it's gonna kinda all work itself out in a minute. But if it's, if it's uh, curling in or curling back a little bit, that's totally fine for right now. Okay, so moving on to round three. What we're gonna do for round three is change colors to start. So we just wanna cut our yarn and we're gonna fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop and then just kinda tighten it down. Okay, our next color in our lineup was the tan. So I went ahead and grabbed the tan and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna tie this one a little bit differently than we normally do. What we wanna do is tie our new color into the back loop of any of these stitches. Just pick any random stitch. I like to kinda go not too close to where you fastened off just because it'll create a little bit of bulk. So just kinda go across from that. And what we're gonna do is go into the back loop. So if you look at your stitch here, it looks like a little V. Little V's kinda circling this, going around the circle here. So we're gonna go into that back loop just like that with our hook, and then grab your tan or whatever color you're using, your new yarn, hook it on, and then you're gonna pull it through, okay? We're gonna leave that front loop intact, okay? And then we're just gonna tie it right on. And then what we wanna do, we're tying it into the back loop because it, it sort of rolls it out of the way. We don't want this big knot showing on this particular part. Okay, so we're gonna kinda get this tail out of the way. And then what we wanna do is we're gonna chain four as if we were working a back post double crochet. And that sounds a little bit 
uh, potentially complicated. So um, what I mean by that is we're going to go where we tied it. So it's this stitch here. Um, when we work a back post double crochet, we come in with our hook from the back to the front and go over the post and back down. Okay, so we're going to work our chain that way because we're going to be working back post double crochets for the rest of our round. What we need to do is uh, work our chain the same way so it mimics the same look. Okay, so come in from the back with your hook, go over top. Now pick up that yarn, bring it back through like this, and then chain four. One, two, three, four. And now your chain is mimicking the same look as if you did a back post double crochet there. Okay, now what we're going to do next is work a back post double crochet chain one in each stitch around, okay? So remember our chain three before counted as a double crochet? So that chain three counts as one of these back post double crochets, and then that fourth chain serves uh, as the chain one that'll be in between all these other back post double crochets. And as we work it, it'll make more sense if, if it's a little complicated. Okay, so let's work a back post double crochet into the next stitch, okay? Yarn around hook, Come in from the back, over top, and go back down. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came. You'll have three loops on the hook. And at this point, you'll just work it like your regular double crochet. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops. And then chain one, okay? So that now you can see why that chain four um, is four instead of three this time. Okay, so once again, work a back post double crochet into the next stitch. We'll do a few of these together. And then chain one. Back post double crochet into the next stitch. And chain one. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. So remember I mentioned that you might get a little bit like a cup look from your um, circle. This is, um, going to roll it forward naturally. So it kind of doesn't matter if it's doing that. It's just because we did like eight stitches in our circle instead of like 16. It's not laying flat, but it doesn't have to lay flat because we're going to kind of actually accentuate that curling with this row or round we're doing now. Okay. So still working my back post double crochet chain one. Okay. Now see this tail. This is really weird because it's pushing this knot and this tail forward, which is kind of odd, but we're gonna take a tapestry needle and deal with that later. So if yours kind of spills forward like this, don't worry about it. It's um, something we're gonna take care of in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna continue working my back post double crochets around my circle here. And then when we return, we're gonna finish up this round and move on to our next round. Okay, just working that last back post double crochet of the round, then a chain one, and then we're going to join. So this uh, sort of folds down, you can pick it back up, but we're going to join with a slip stitch, slip stitch in the third chain up. It's really important that you do the third chain up because we need to have that chain one in between each one of these stitches, okay? So one, two, three insert your hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, okay? So now what we're gonna do is, uh, round three is complete now, so now we're gonna, we're gonna switch colors again. We're gonna be switching colors more frequently now. Uh, before we do that though, I'm just gonna quickly grab my tapestry needle. Remember that tail that was sticking out, like pointing forward? I'm just going to grab this and just send it to the back here because if I don't, it'll, bother me. <laughs> so just kind of see how we can just kind of do that with our tapestry needle and now it's pretty and out of the way. Okay. So you can see how, remember I was telling you about the, how it curls inward a little bit. It's totally fine because it kind of becomes part of the design. So we're getting some real uh, dimension on our square now. Okay. So we need to cut our yarn and we need to fasten off. And then what we're going to do is move on to round four. Okay. All right, we're now switching to the pewter yarn, which is a dark gray. So I removed my dark background. <laughs> so I just wanted you to be able to see this as easily as possible. So for round four, what we need to do, we're gonna kind of do the same thing. We'll retie our color, our new yarn color, 
into the back loop of any stitch. So just locate, I like to go across from where I fastened off just so there's not too much bulk in weaving things in later. So um, grab any stitch and remember how we had some V's like this? Go into that back loop, same thing we did before. And then we're just gonna hook our new yarn on, pull it through and tie it on. So tie your yarn into the back loop of any stitch from your round. And then what we're gonna do, once again, is we're going to chain four. But this time, we're going to chain four as if we were working a front post double crochet. We're creating a ton of texture by doing this, so um, we want it to just be very similar all the way around. We don't want it to stand out. If we just did a regular chain here, it would stick out, okay, and look kind of odd. So, for our front post double crochet, what we're gonna do this time is see our post, this is where we tied our yarn onto the top, and then we have our post here. We're gonna take our hook and come up under it this time, like this, from the front. So from the front, come up under it like that, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring that loop up, and chain four. One, two, three, four. And again, the first three chains of this count as the stitch and then another chain to separate them all the way around as we're doing them. Okay, so for this round, we're going to work a front post double crochet chain one in every stitch, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook. We'll do a few of these together. Wrap the yarn around the hook, and then for this first stitch, come up under, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it back through the way you came. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, and that's it. And then chain one, okay? Let's do that again. Yarn around hook, bring it up under, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, and chain one. So you're just gonna work front post double crochets in each stitch all the way around and be sure you do your chain one in between, okay? So I'm gonna keep going with my stitches and when we rejoin, we'll finish up round four and move on to round five. Okay, just working the last stitch of our round and chain one. And then once again, we're gonna join to close in that third chain up. So one, two, three, insert the hook into that third chain up and close it with a slip stitch, okay? So you may notice it's becoming a little bit of a, a bowl shape again, but that's fine. That's It's all going to kind of work out. Okay, so next we're going to move on and cut our yarn once again. We're switching colors again and fasten off. Okay, for round five, I grab my next color, which for me is the mallard. And what we're going to do for round five is we're going to tie our new color this time into any of these chain one spaces. So remember we did a chain one in between each stitch? That created a space. So take your hook into the chain one space this time, hook the new yarn on, bring it through, and then we're just going to tie it right on, okay? So a little bit different this time. And then what we're going to do is grab your yarn, and we're going to chain four. So go back into that same space, bring up a loop and chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're going to work a front post double crochet in that first stitch that we come to. So you can see it's like a long column. So work a front post double crochet into that one from the previous row. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain one and then we're gonna work a double crochet into the next space. So that space in between those two posts, right here in the middle, work a double crochet. Okay? And then we're just gonna repeat this sequence around, okay? So front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? So let's do a couple of these together. Work a front post double crochet into the next stitch, then a chain one, and then a double crochet into the space. Front post double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, and a double crochet into the space. So this is creating even a more interesting texture as we go around. Okay, once again, front post double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, double crochet into the space. 
front post double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, double crochet into the space. And you can see what we're doing here is sort of laying it back down so it's less of a bowl shape, okay? It, it kind of changes and transforms as we work more rounds, this pattern. Okay, next, front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space. We've come to a tail, you can kind of get it out of the way for now. Once again, front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space, front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space, front post double crochet, whoops, chain one, double crochet into the space. Okay, we're just doing this all the way around. We're a little more than halfway done. So if you've mastered this, you can kind of uh, move on. If you wanna crochet along with me for this round, feel free to do that too. So we're just working once again, front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space. Front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space, we're getting there, and then front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space, front post double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the space, whoops, and then one last one, front post double crochet, chain one, and then one last double crochet into the space. And then we're gonna join to close around with a slip stitch, same thing we've been doing. Now this had a chain four at the beginning, so once again we'll do one, two, three chains up because we wanna preserve that chain one to give that a nice space in between. Join with a slip stitch to close, okay? So now, round five is complete. We're going to cut our yarn, fasten off here, and now grab your next color. Um, for me, it's gonna be this iced aqua color. That'll add some really fun color in here. Another color, this is our Actually, our last color we'll be incorporating. Then we'll start repeating the colors again. Okay, so for round six, once again, we're gonna tie a new color into the back loop of any of these front post double crochets. So any of these columns here, go into the top of one of those and go into those back loops like we've done before. Hook the new yarn on and just tie it on like that. Okay, into those back loops. And then we're just gonna tie this aqua right on here. And then we're gonna chain four as if we're working a front post double crochet. So go back to that post here, come up under, hook your yarn on, bring up a loop, and then chain four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is in that chain one space at the very beginning here, we're gonna work two double crochets right into that chain one space, one, and two, and then in this, remember this double crochet from our previous round? In that stitch that you see, it's sort of pushed back, it's kind of in between these two posts here. We're gonna work a back post double crochet into that stitch. Okay, just like that. And then we're gonna work a front post double crochet into that front post double crochet from the previous round. And then we're gonna repeat. Okay, so two double crochet in the chain one space right after that front post. And then a back post double crochet into that double crochet from the previous row, round rather. And then work a front post double crochet, okay? And we're just gonna repeat this sequence all the way around. So let's do a few together. Let's work a, uh, excuse me, two double crochet in the chain one space, one, and two, a back post double crochet into the next stitch, 
and a front post double crochet into the next stitch. All right, one more time and then we'll kind of go off on our own and do uh, the rest of the round. So two double crochet in the next space, that chain one space, one and two. Then we'll work a back post double crochet into the next stitch and a front post double crochet into the next stitch, okay? So just keep repeating this sequence all the way around and when we rejoin, we'll finish up this round, round six, and we'll move on to round seven. Okay, just coming up to the end of the round here and we just worked a back post double crochet. I'm just working that last front post double crochet and then we're gonna work two double crochet in our chain one space. And then a back post double crochet to finish it up. Okay, we just repeated the sequence all the way around and now uh, we can join. So one, two, three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round. Sometimes you have to kind of wiggle your hook in there a little bit. All right, so now we have finished round six with our aqua. We're gonna cut the yarn once again. And so like I mentioned before, uh, we did all five colors. So this was all five colors of our little um, lineup here. And we're back to the eggplant. So what we wanna do for round seven is we're gonna tie a new color into the back loop of any of these front post double crochets. So just kind of go around and look for one and go into those back loops. And once again, we're gonna tie that into the back loops. Okay, hook your new yarn on and bring it through. And then you can just kind of tie it. Okay, so then we're gonna chain four uh, to start our round as if we're working a front post double crochet. So this, this part is a little bit familiar at this point. So you can see how all the way around there, our, our columns are starting to really line up. So go up under that post where you tied it on, bring up a loop and chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then we're gonna work a double crochet into each of the next two stitches. So instead of working in the spaces this time, see those two double crochets from the previous row? We're gonna work a double crochet in each of those. So work a double crochet into that first stitch. It's a little bit different than what we've been doing. A double crochet into the next stitch. We're gonna skip over the back post double crochet. You can really see it because it's kind of pushed back. And there's a little like horizontal bar. You can really tell where that is. So we're going to skip over that back post double crochet and then we're going to work a front post double crochet into the front post double crochet from the previous round. You can see that column goes all the way down starting to really look kind of like a radial. Okay? And then chain one. So that's our little sequence for this round. Okay? So let's do a couple of more of these together. Work a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Those were our double crochets from the previous round as a side note. So double crochet, double crochet, skip over the back post double crochet and work a front post double crochet into that front post double crochet from the previous round and chain one. Double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, skip over that back post double crochet and work a front post double crochet. Just like that. And chain one. All right, let's do this one more time together and then we'll kind of depart and finish it up on our own. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Skip that back post double crochet and work a front post double crochet into the next stitch and chain one, okay? So keep going with this sequence all the way around, and when we rejoin, we'll finish up round seven and begin round eight. Okay, just coming up to the end of round seven. Uh, so you're gonna work all the way around until you have those last two double crochets <clears throat> 
coming up to the end of round seven and how you'll finish round seven is when you see those last two double crochets of the round, just work a double crochet into each one. So work a double crochet in that first double crochet you come to, double crochet into the next double crochet or the last one rather. And then you'll see one more back post, but we've been skipping those. So we're also gonna skip that. And then we're gonna join to close the round in that third chain up once again. So one, two, three, join to close with a slip stitch. And then round seven is complete. So again, we're going to be changing colors. Each round will have its own color. And you can see we're starting to accumulate some ends. A lot of these ends have been woven in and we'll weave some in at the end. So just snip your yarn and grab your next color, whatever it may be. For me, it's gonna be the tan. Okay, moving on to round eight. This is a very exciting round because this is where we turn our circle into a square. So it's a really interesting and fun round to do. We're gonna grab our next color, which is the tan. And before we begin, I just wanted to show you that I did put some stitch markers on here to kind of show you visually what we're doing here. You don't have to do this because we're gonna walk through this whole round together, but I did put them equidistant. If you find that this helps you, please feel free. But I have one at the each corner here. So if you wanted to do this yourself, um, we're putting, uh, we're working into, when we do our corners, all four corners, we're gonna be working into the spaces, the chain one space of the round. So um, I did this, it's right after that front post double crochet. So in between each one of these, just to give you a, a way to uh, space these out, there are one, two, three, four front post double crochets in between each of these stitch markers, just to space it out. Again, you don't have to do the stitch markers because we're gonna walk through this all the way around, okay? So what we want to do is uh, we're going to scoot this stitch marker out of the way and I'm going to flip these up so they won't be so noisy, but we're going to grab our tan, which is the next color of our sequence. Again, we've already gone through our sequence at least once so you can sort of peek and see what's next if you can't remember. And so we're going to go into this chain one space here. Again, that's the chain one space we worked right after that front post double crochet from the previous round. I'm going to just scoot that stitch marker out of the way, insert your hook into that chain one space, hook your new yarn on and bring it through. Now we're going to tie the yarn on just like that. Okay, we're gonna reach in with our hook, bring up a loop and then chain three. One, two, three. So our corners for the next several rounds are gonna be worked the same way. When you're making a crochet square, we're gonna work corners and sides. So for our corner, we're gonna start with our chain three, which counts as a double crochet, and then we're gonna work another double crochet into that same space, and then we're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna work two more double crochets in that same space, okay? And this will be our first corner that will begin to transform this into a square. So there's our corner, and now let's work down the side. We're gonna do our side all the way till we get to this next stitch marker, okay? So what we want to do is work a double crochet, and we might need, to, uh, might need to slide this over a bit just to kind of expose that. So that last double crochet that you worked, that'll create a stitch. So work a double crochet into the first stitch here. Work a double crochet into the next stitch. And work a double crochet into the next stitch, which is also, um, that front post double crochet we worked in the previous round, okay? Then we're gonna work a double crochet into the chain one space. Remember we worked a chain one after that stitch when we worked the previous round. And then we're going to repeat this sequence, okay? So double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet into the chain one space. Now I did hold that tail along the edges I worked and it kind of weaved it in as we went along. I'm gonna drop it now because I feel like it's been sufficient enough. Okay, let's repeat. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the stitch after that. 
and then work a double crochet into the chain one space. And now we'll repeat. we will repeat. Double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and now we're at a corner again. See our stitch marker is letting us know. So we're gonna work our corner the way we did a little bit farther back. And in that space, we're gonna work two double crochet, one and two, then chain two, and then work two more double crochets into the same space, okay? And you can see we're starting to get a little bit of a square shape. I wanted to point out that at this point, it's sort of a little bit rounded looking still because we're trying to go from a circle to a square. So a couple more rounds and that'll uh, straighten out uh, nice and neat. Okay, let's continue down this side. Um, again, might need to slide things over to see your stitch a little bit better. Work a double crochet into the next stitch. Now I'm gonna move this stitch marker because it's making a lot of noise. Double crochet into the next stitch double crochet into the stitch after that, double crochet into the chain one space, okay? And then repeat, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that, and double crochet into the chain one space, okay? Moving right along, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet and stitch after that. Now this was actually our chain that we did at the beginning of the round and it just looks a little bit different, but just treat it the same way. So double crochet into the next stitch and then double crochet into the chain one space, just like that. Double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and now we're at a stitch marker again, okay? So let's do one more corner together, and then we'll kind of finish up the round because we've done this a few times now. So in that space where our stitch marker is, we're gonna work a corner. So two double crochet, one and two, chain two and two double crochet into the same space, okay? We can scoot everything out of the way and then we're just gonna keep on going. Double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet into the chain one space, okay? So keep this sequence going all the way around and what we're gonna do is keep going uh, we're gonna work the corner the same way we did and continue around. When we get towards the end of this round, we'll rejoin, we're gonna switch colors and work another round. So you can see it's really starting to look like a corner. It has a little bit of a, it's kind of bowing out, but that'll straighten up like I mentioned before. So keep going with your round the same way we've been doing it. And when we rejoin, we'll switch colors and move on to round nine. Okay, just coming up to the end of our round, working that last stitch of the round. And then we're gonna close the round, count three chains up, and join with a slip stitch. Whoops, make sure you catch both of those loops when you do that. I need to wiggle it a little bit. There we go. Okay, with a slip stitch. Okay, so we're gonna cut the yarn once again. Fasten off. And then our next color is the pewter, okay? Now, we can go ahead and take these stitch markers out. I've flipped them to the back to get them out of my way as I worked. That one already took one out. Okay, so now what we wanna do is you can kind of sharpen up your corners and it, it is starting to shape up to be a square. We can back up a little bit because it's getting bigger. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do just a really easy round of double crochet stitches, very similar to this, but we're just working in stitches. It's super easy. So grab your next color. For me, it's the pewter. And we're gonna go once again into any corner space 
and we're just going to work some double crochet rounds for a little bit. And that is um, where you can really customize the size of your square. So if you want it to be a little bit smaller, you could work less of these really basic rounds. If you want it to be um, bigger, you could just keep going and going. If your tension is different, like if you tend to crochet really tight, you might want to add some extra and so forth, okay? So we tied our new yarn into the corner space. We're going to go in with our hook, bring up a loop, and once again we'll chain three. One, two, three, and we'll start our corner the same way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go one double crochet, because remember that chain three counts as one of our double crochets, chain two, and then two double crochets into the same space. So very uh, similar to the last round we just did. Okay, so here's our corner, just like that. And then all we're gonna do is work a double crochet in each of these double crochets across, okay? So go ahead and work a double crochet. You might need to scoot things over. If you go by the posts, each post has a loop at the top. If you're not sure where to, where to begin, look for that post and there's a little loop at the top. That's the first one you should work it into. So work a double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into the next stitch, and the next stitch and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna work across, we'll work the next corner together and then we'll kind of go off on our own and add some of these rounds and get some sizing on our squares. All right, we're coming up to the end of the row, just gonna work that last stitch, and we're gonna do the corner the same way. Two double crochet into the corner space, one and two, chain two, and two double crochet into that corner space, one and two, okay? So then we're just gonna do this all the way around. Work double crochet stitches in every stitch across, work the corner the same way. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet, double crochets all the way down, and so forth. Okay, I'm gonna keep going with my round, and when we return, we're gonna keep uh, growing our square. Okay, we're just coming up to the end of this round, working this last couple of stitches. And we're gonna join to close with a slip stitch in that third chain up, the same thing we've been doing for many of these rounds that we've done together. Just gonna get a little bit more yarn. And then one, two, three chains up. Okay, join with a slip stitch to close the round. And then I'm gonna cut the yarn because we're gonna switch colors again like we've been doing. And round nine is complete. Now, to get the size, like I mentioned, this is where you can really experiment with the sizing, okay? So let me grab my ruler because we are at about eight, little over eight inches, just a little bit over eight inches. So I'm gonna keep working, repeating round nine over and over until my piece is just at about 12 inches. This is a 12 inch ruler. So just at about 12 inches, maybe a hair under, because we're also gonna put an optional single crochet round on it next, okay? So work your round nine, repeat round nine until it's as large as you would like it to be. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. And then when we rejoin, we're gonna finish up, get some dimensions, I'm gonna show you how many rounds it took, and we're gonna add a nice little single crochet edge just to kind of frame the whole thing in. So keep working round nine until your square is as large as you would like it to be. Just working that last stitch of our round, and once again, we'll join with a slip stitch in that third chain up to close the round. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fasten off. And I'm gonna show you what I've done so far here. Okay, just fasten that color off. Okay, so we have worked a bunch more rounds. So we, where we left off before a few minutes ago, we worked round nine in this pewter color here. And so I repeated a few more times just to give it that um, sizing that we want. And so pewter is right here, round nine. So we did round 10, and these were all repeating round nine. So round 10, round 11, round 12, and round 13. So we just have this nice solid edge that kind of mimics the colors that we've done so far. Okay, so if you like the square like this and you wanna just keep it with the edge like this, you can. 
I'm gonna also show you how to do a single crochet border just to kind of frame it in and give it just a little bit of an edging. If you're at the 12 inch mark, so for me it's pretty borderline. I'm just shy of 12 inches. So I'm, I'm gonna go for it and add this uh, single crochet border. If you want to, uh, like I mentioned before, you could do less repeats of these solid rounds um, and make your square smaller. You could keep going and make it larger. So it's really flexible, but we're after that 12 inches by 12 inches for this one. So let's work the single crochet edge and that will wrap up our square. So what we wanna do is go back into um, any corner space once again, and we're gonna insert our hook into that corner space, and we're going to hook our new yarn on and just bring it through, and we're just gonna tie the yarn on just like that. Now reach back in with your hook, bring up a loop, and then chain one, okay? So what we're gonna do is work four single crochets into the center here, and I'm gonna hold that tail along the edges I work, and let me just zoom way in here so you can see me, what I'm doing here better. And we're just gonna work four single crochets into this uh, corner space. So one, and if you're not familiar with how to work a single crochet, insert the hook into the space, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through both loops, and that's it, okay? So that was one, two, three, and four, okay? Now we're gonna kind of push that over because we're gonna work a single crochet in each stitch across, okay? So single crochet in the next stitch, single crochet in the ne next stitch, and so forth, all the way across. Let's do the single crochets um, until we get to the corner, and then we'll rejoin at this next corner down here and we'll work that next corner, and then you'll kind of just be able to go for it and finish the rest of the round on your own. So keep working single crochets in each stitch, and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, just coming up to that next corner, and again, you're just gonna work four single crochets in that corner. So one, two, three, and four, okay? So continue around working a single crochet in each stitch around, four single crochets in each corner space. We're gonna go around and rejoin at the end and then we'll be able to finish our square up. Just working our last single crochet of the row and then we're gonna join in a slip stitch. Remember that chain one that we had at the beginning of our round here? We're gonna just work a slip stitch into that and it's very short so you might need to use your hand as a little helper. We're gonna join to close with a slip stitch, okay? So our square is complete. We just need to weave in some ends. So I'm just gonna cut the yarn and fasten off and then grab your tapestry needle. We have a couple of different types of ends that we're gonna have on this because we did weave some things as we went along. Um, now some of them, like this one, we wove as we went along and you can just snip that. If you wanna give it a little extra um, security so it doesn't pop out, you can take your tapestry needle and go back in the other direction too if you'd like. I'm just gonna snip all these ones that I wove as I went along. So that makes it super easy, as you can see at the end, when we have a lot of ends here, it's, it's um, nice to just be able to snip some of these and be done with them. Now some of them we will definitely have to uh, weave in. So let me show you how to do one of those now. This one is one we wove. All right, so this last one that we did here, just grab your tapestry needle. And if you notice, I flipped to the back of our square, which I think looks equally interesting on the back here, but we're just gonna flip it over. And when you have multicolor projects like this, you wanna stay in these back loops because the front is what we're gonna be looking at when we look at this piece. So when you weave in, I like to go in one direction, come back in the other direction, and then some of those ones that we snipped, like I said, you can also weave those in the opposite direction too if you want a little bit extra um, security that they won't pop out. Okay, so go ahead and finish weaving in and then we're gonna look at our finished square. So our ends have all been woven in and here is the front of our square and the back. And it's I think it's really fun on both sides to be honest. Uh, so. That concludes our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making this square. This was really fun, and I can't wait to see all of the colors that all of you choose. That's always really fun. And what will you be using your squares for? You could make a large dishcloth. You could join them all into a big square. You could make a pillow out of this. 
So that is how you crochet the tidal moon square. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.